actively getting the donors that are donating their organs to the people on that transplant waiting list. So I'm going to pass it over to Suzette, and she's going to fill in with the full story. Thank you, Jessica. I always am so honored to be able to share my story. I don't know that I've shared it uh, in this much detail. I've got a lot to cover. <laughs> I'm going to try my best to get on, get on through it. But um, I've never had the opportunity to share all of it in a group setting like this. I've shared it many times overseas or with individuals. But my transplant story actually uh, started um, as a young girl. And it continued on after we moved to Florida and the bottom line, it started in this church. So let me get, fill in some of the blanks for you. Uh, April 24th of 1967, uh, my life changed. My sister Jeannie and I, uh, we lived in South Texas with our family, of course. And uh, one day our pastor's wife came to the elementary school and got us out of school. And um, we didn't know why, we were just excited to get out of school. and. Um, we got in the car and he sat down, they sat down, and we all got settled in the car and he turns around very slowly and he said, um, I want to share with you that your mommy went to heaven. And uh, so we were like, we were raised in a Christian home, very strict. Uh, I appreciate that now. When you say strict, it wasn't dogmatic strict, but they had principles that didn't change. And so anyway, um, so if he continued talking after that, I don't remember. Um, because we were taught heaven was a great place. And for the Christian, that's where we're going. That's where Jesus is. And I knew this as a little eight-year-old eight girl, but I I uh, was a little, I was trying to process it all, really. Um, and so, anyway, uh, we go home, and uh, there's a lot of people at our house, and people are crying, and people are making food, and uh, Jeannie and I were, I was eight, Jeannie was nine, we're 16 months apart. And so we came in the house and my dad wasn't there. Now my mom and dad were high school sweethearts. They married right out of high school as soon as they could. And uh, so anyway, uh, when we get there, he's not there. And so we're kind of confused about, you know, all these people and what's going on. And uh, <coughs> so people would come up to us and no one said the word died or dead or not coming back for sure. So we were trying to process this heaven story, okay, Heaven's where we want to go, right? We're excited about going to heaven, so why is everybody crying? So it was just very confusing for us as, as small children. So when our dad came in, the whole mood changed, and everybody was comforting him. And he was crying, and he could barely even, I don't even know if you noticed, Jeannie and I were in the room, he was so distraught. And she died of kidney failure. And she had been on dialysis, which at that time was a long process. Um, I dialyzed three hours three times a week. My mom dialyzed eight hours, uh, three times a week. So it's changed a lot in that time. But anyway, uh, so he came home and uh, we were trying to make, uh, you know, preparations and everybody was talking about this and that, who's gonna take the girls and just a lot of information that we just really didn't understand. And so um, it was very hard for, um, I don't even remember Jeannie and I really talking about it, but neither one of us cried. Because like I say, we were taught heaven was the destination for the Christian. And so we just, uh, we don't remember crying either one of us. So anyway, during our high school years, my dad took us to um, the hospital. We got tested to see if we had the same kidney disease as my mom, and we did. And so the doctor really um, tried to uh, impress upon us not to have children because we would pass on the disease. So um, years passed and we married and uh, we both adopted. Jeannie adopted a little boy and we adopted a little girl. They're in their thirties now. And uh, they were very close. But um, anyway, in March of 1989, Jeannie began to go, she had to go on kidney dialysis uh, treatments. Her kidneys began to fail. Up to that point, we really didn't have any signs of having kidney issues. So uh, she, had an opportunity to get a kidney transplant. And it wasn't an exact match, but back then there were a lot of things different. They really advanced a lot now. But she took the kidney and the uh, immunosuppressive drugs that she had to be on to suppress her immune system to keep the kidney going uh, were very strong. And there was one, one immunosuppressive drug for all transplant patients, kidney, heart, liver, everybody got the same one. So they saw a lot of um, side effects, bad, bad side effects. 
So um, when she, the kidney rejected, I was very, very sad that she lost the kidney. I went to see her in the hospital about a month later. And um, she was very sick with some se severe side effects. I won't go into, but they were bad. And I thought to myself, I could never do this, because I had the same prognosis she did. You know, you'll live for a while, you go on dialysis, and then maybe you'll get a transplant. So um, when I saw the side effects, I was overwhelmed. And I just thought to myself, I could never do this. I don't know how she's surviving, but I could never do this. So that was kind of in the back of my mind. In 1984, I mean, I'm sorry, in 1981, Ronnie and I went to Mexico to language school. We were going to be missionaries. And so we learned Spanish. We were there for a while, and then we went to Quito, Ecuador as missionaries. Um, and so while we were there, we were there five years, uh, this third year, I fell and I broke my tailbone. And there's not a lot you can do for that. You just take strong medication until it gets better. And so unfortunately, six months later, I did it again. There was nothing to put back. There was nothing there that was really, um, that they could fix. And so they took the fragments that they had and they um, put them back together on the first one, but the second one, there was nothing they could do. So the last three vertebras they took out of my spine. And um, so that was very painful. In 1994, because of the, you know, because of the uh, strong medication they were giving me for the pain from my tailbone, my kidneys began to fail. And so um, they went to 7% function actually um, within that year. So we decided to come home. We wanted to stay in mission, so we came to Florida, here in Jacksonville, or came to Jacksonville, because we wanted to stay in the missionary work we'd been doing. So it was a very hard decision to leave Ecuador, but um, I needed some treatment. And so we got here, and we uh, came to the church. Uh, as Sharon mentioned, they uh, founded this church, and they also founded the missionary organization that Ronnie and I were part of. So they were the only people we knew and trusted and loved. And so, you know, that was a part of this whole plan that God had for us. So um, here in Jacksonville, the, the transplant team began, I mean, the doctors at Mayo began to talk about transplantation. And I said, no, I'm not really interested in that. You know, because I had, had those memories. I said, I'm not really interested in that. And um, so I went on dialysis and I did two different kinds over eight years. And um, Every morning I would get up and I would get up really early and I'd read my Bible and I would pray. And well, this one particular morning I got up and sat down in my rocker like I normally did, had my coffee all ready, and I just felt tired of doing this. Eight years, three hours a day, three times a week. It was, it was tiring because it didn't make you feel real good for a while. And so I just said, Lord, I know this isn't all you have for me to do. This could not be possibly be the rest of my life. And uh, I said, you know how I feel about transplant? I mean, I just talked to him like he was in the room. And he just gave me this one word. It was research. Just research. And to me, that meant contact the medical community, find out what is out there now, uh, 13 years later from my sister's transplant, that has changed. So I began to talk to doctors uh, about that. I began to talk uh, to nurses. Uh, I was able to be in contact with a few people who had had a transplant and it was good, and then others that it wasn't good, and then others, family members, that their um, loved one had passed from transplant. I wanted to know everything. I'm kind of a detailed person, and I like to know, you know, what to expect. So anyway, during all this time, uh, I really was um, concerned about the immunosuppressive drugs because they were so strong, and that was one of the uh, reassurances that one of the um, surgeons gave me was that was 13 years ago and now they give immunosuppressant drugs different to kidney patients, heart patients, liver patients. It's, they all get different ones. It's not one that fits everybody anymore. So we don't see the side effects that we normally see. And so that was good news for me. I was glad that, um, you know, I had gotten that little piece of information. Sometime in our Christian walk, some new information that we didn't know before really helps us have faith because it was, you know, wasn't like I thought it was going to be. So anyway, um, um, because of the um, immunosuppressant drugs and, and my fear of them, I guess you could say, um, I really wanted to find out as much as I could about the situation and what, what they offer now for transplant patients. So I knew about healing. 
I believed in healing. I was taught healing. And I knew that that was part of God's plan for his children. But it didn't seem like anything was happening. And so, um, you know, I wasn't sure. Uh, Lord, what, what do I do? Do I go with this transplant or not? And God gave me peace in the doctor's office of all places. Um, I just, I felt peace come over me about doing it. And so that's kind of been the way Ronnie and I have led our lives. If we have peace, we move forward. If we don't, we wait till we have peace. I mean, it's a simple little thing, it seems. But, um, but when peace came, I was ready to do it. And I told the doctor, I'm, I'm ready, you know, to get signed up to be on the transplant list. So he was pretty surprised by that. And um, anyway, um, we were attending here at um, Redeemer Church. And God had prepared my donor years later, I mean, years earlier. She was 15 years old. And she um, had heard the news about the, the heart transplant, the first heart transplant that they were told. It was on the news. And she had heard about that. And it really, uh, really touched her heart. And um, so then years on, she had a friend that had a transplant, and a kidney transplant that was successful. And she had this thought. You ever just had a fleeting thought thinking, oh, that's just me. But she had this thought, wow, I'd like to do that someday for somebody. Just a thought, 15 years old. God's working a plan. So uh, in August of 2003, I was very sick with a blood, trans uh, blood infection and uh, was in the hospital for a while and I was getting intravenous um, antibiotics. And I was very, very sick and it didn't look good. And uh, so my husband came to talk to our pastor here at the time and he said, I think she's probably, I don't think she's going to make it. And so in his great wisdom, he said, let's pray. So we prayed together and God's presence came. And God gave him the idea, our pastor, let's put in the church bulletin. See what happens. Just see, ask the people to pray and see if God might move on their heart, you know, to, um, to give a kidney. So Ronnie came home and told me that because I was still in the hospital and I was, Pretty surprised. I'd never heard of that before. And um, I thought, okay. So we did. Well, when my donor heard, read it in the bulletin, she knew she was the one. Now, another lady had gone through the testing. She, for medical reasons, she was not a match. But um, when she saw it in the bulletin, she said, I knew that I was a match. And so she went through the a testing in Mayo Clinic, and she was a match, a real good match. And so a lot of things had changed with even approvals of others, but she was approved. Now, God worked behind the scenes. I believe this all my life. God is working behind the scenes of our life every day to cause his plans and purposes to come about and for just be obedient. And I believe that when she was 15, God put that plan in her, I mean, that dream in her heart, or that, that thought in her heart that grew into a dream, a desire that came to pass because we, were, we didn't live in the same state. We didn't even go to the same church, but eventually we got at the same church. And when she read it, she knew that she was um, she was the donor. And I'm so thankful that the way God works things out. I'm very healthy today. I'm very strong. Uh, I really am so happy to be able to travel when we can. We really miss traveling, but uh, when we can. One of the things I want to share with you about uh, one of the surgeons talked to Liz, Leslie, my donor, and um, he said that. Um, you know, if you get one living donor, oh, that's great. If you get two, that's pretty rare. 20 people, people called Mayo Clinic to donate a kidney to me. I said 20, 2 -oh. 20 people. And that's very humbling. Even 18 years later when I think about it, it's very humbling that 20 people, many did not even know me personally. Some didn't have the right blood type, but still, um, just the way God orchestrated and put us in the right place and the people and all, um, it was just his plan and the way he had it worked out for his purposes and to fulfill a desire and a purpose um, for me and Leslie as well because her dream, her thought became a dream and then it became reality. And so um, I am so thrilled to be able to share my testimony tonight that started here in this church. And I would, um, I would like to thank Leslie for the gift of life. And Leslie's here. Would you please stand up, Leslie Workman? Thank you, Leslie.
the gift of life. It's a precious thing, and that's the whole point of tonight that Jessica and I are trying to get across. To think about it, pray about it. You might be a kidney donor. You might, you know, the opportunity. But talk to Jessica and find out. There's so many. I got, uh, was it 40 questions you may not know about transplant? It was probably maybe even 30. I didn't know. So there's a lot of information out there on transplant. People are dying every day. I'm not one of them because I got a transplant. I'm so fortunate that God had a plan for my life to continue in ministry and to continue doing the things that that I do. But uh, talk to Jessica after the meeting and find out. It's it's such a wonderful thing. And the thing I'm going to leave you with is one of Leslie's quotes that she quotes every time she shares. God gave us two kidneys, one to keep, one to give. Amen. Amen. Jessica, can you share just one more time for the viewers watching who you are and how they can get in contact with you? Yes, I'm okay. with LifeQuest. Uh, you can find us at lifequestfla.org. Um, we're also on all the social media platforms, so if you want to find us on Facebook or Instagram or anything. All right, thank you.